Well, the latest example of how regional police forces in Canada appear to have no control over Khalistani extremists, a letter which we actually have from um, a regional police force in Canada seems to indicate uh, that, you know, the message for people in Brampton, where there's been so much violence re recently in the Brampton Triveni Mandir, has been told you must postpone a consular camp organized by the Indian consulate. The temple responds, they say that they're deeply saddened that Canadians feel unsafe coming to temples in the first place. Well, joining us uh, now, Pandit Yudhishthir Dhanraj, the spiritual leader of the Brampton uh, Triveni Mandir. I'm also joined by Dr. Swasti Rao, a geopolitical expert, Terry Milewski, a well-known Canadian journalist, the former Foreign Secretary of India, Mr. Shashank, and Den Baxendale, a columnist in Canada. Uh, Pandit Dhanraj, let me come to you first. What exactly was the message of the police? Namaskar, everyone. The message of the police was very clear in that we have an extremely high and imminent threat for this event. And if you want us to provide security uh, protection of the police, then we have to give you an assessment of cost. And it can range between 50,000 to 100,000 Canadian dollars. And otherwise, we have to recommend that you cancel the event because there is a very serious threat. And um, if you go ahead, you'll be endangering the public. Pandit Dhanraj, let me get that right. The police in Peel told the temple to pay for security. That is correct, because we asked them, we want to continue with the program. The consulate has also asked us to continue with the program. Our community members are asking for the program. So what is our option? Can the police not provide a, a continuous presence? And they said, in this situation, because of the high level of threat, actually the cost of security will fall on the hosts and the host being Brampton Triveni Mandir, we can assume that the cost will be between $50,000 to $100,000. Um, Teddy Miliuski, how would you look at that? Uh, you know, I mean, the service that was being provided over here was a basic one. It's a consular service for elderly Indo-Canadians, some Indian nationals. They're looking for some verification of their life pensions, etc., etc. The Peel Police says that, you know, this mandir, this temple has to pay for security. Is that, do you believe that well, I'm afraid, that's right? I'm afraid this is a black eye for Canada. Uh, this is outrageous to, 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 to be told that, I'm sorry, you're on your own uh, unless you want to pay for it. We're not going to preserve peace and security on the streets of Brampton. Uh, this, it is the role of any police force to provide that assurance that, that people can carry on lawful proceedings uh, in peace and security uh, without being held, uh, held up, as it were, uh, to, to pay through the nose considerable sums of money uh, to get what they're entitled to anyway because they pay their taxes. Uh, this is not good enough. It is the role of a po police service to provide that security rather than to throw up their hands and say, sorry, we can't do it uh, unless you cough up. Uh, this is a, uh, there have been, uh, uh, to be fair, signs in this whole affair that Canada is uh, making some steps towards the Indian side to provide uh, some assurance that uh, there will be arrests. There have been arrests. Uh, one of them, for example, is a Sikhs for Justice. Uh, that's the organization which is running a referendum on the Sikh independence. Uh, a gentleman from SFJ uh, named Gosal has been arrested in a charge with assault with a weapon. That's a serious matter. Uh, there's also the case where Sergeant Harinda Sohi, as you know, he was the officer that seemed to be uh, uh, participating on the Khalistani side of the demonstrations, and he was indeed suspended. Uh, and so, again, there's been action taken. However, the key thing in all of this is that we have not heard the loud and firm denunciations uh, on the part of political leadership federally and locally, uh, to make it clear that we are not going to put up with this kind of thing, that Canada is not going to sit back and let violence uh, unfold at temples uh, across Canada of any denomination. You know, uh, I actually have a copy uh, of this letter. I'm just going to uh, show it to our viewers and then read out uh, a bit of it. This is a letter written by the chief of police of uh, the Peel Regional Police, right? And it's addressed uh, to the Panditji here the, at the Brampton Tri Triveni Mandir in the community center. And nowhere is the word Khalistani or Sikh threat mentioned over here at all. 
Uh, all they're saying is there are increasing tensions and they respectfully request consideration and rescheduling of this consular camp. Uh, con you know, they're looking for a meaningful assistance. Uh, we believe that a temporary postponement could contribute meaningfully to de-escalating the present tensions and safeguarding the well-being of those attending your location. The, the tensions and the threats are coming from one side. Uh, Panditji, isn't that what this is all about? That these are a distinct minority in Canada of violent Sikh extremists who are utterly disconnected from the large number of Sikhs in Canada and certainly the large number of Indo-Canadians who are threatening your temple and Indian nationals. Isn't this what it, this is essentially about? That's exactly correct because the life certificate events that were successful, those temples informed us that if not 70% of the seniors who showed up for these certificates were not Hindu. They were, in fact, Sikh. So it's not a Hindu-Sikh issue. It's a very small minority that we have that are doing these protests and creating this problem. Um, I just wanted to go across to Dean Baxendale. Uh, Mr. Baxendale, uh, just on the point that's been mentioned on this program by Pandit Yudhishthir Dhanraj, who you just heard, that the police are telling him, and he's, he, and, you know, I mean, he's... He is the spiritual leader of this temple we are talking about, the Brampton Triveni Mandir. The police saying pay up up to a thousand, a hundred thousand dollars. Does that, in your mind, make sense? No, it makes absolutely no sense. And as Terry, uh, you know, stated beforehand, we have an obligation to protect citizens, uh, religious freedom. Um, you know, law-abiding Canadian citizens who are paying taxes. Uh, we need to protect uh, these citizens. And and once again, I think that the government. Uh, has let down uh, Canadians, um, Hindus, and Sikhs uh, in this country to allow you know a separ separatist forces that I would suggest are creating uh, tensions within the community uh, for their own political ends. There is no manifest you know movement inside Punjab for a Khalistani separatist state. It is a something that's taking place in Canada, and citizens deserve. Uh, to be protected. Mayor Brown, who I had a conversation with the other day, uh, clearly wants to have all, if there are crimes being perpetrated, assaults on either side, people need to be uh, charged and put in jail uh, and face the consequences. Today, uh, our police enforcement needs to do this. They need to stop playing diaspora politics, the politicians, and get down, down to it and protect our citizens. Pandit Dhanraj, um is this in writing to you, the police saying that you need to pay? No, this was discussed verbally in a sit-down meeting we had with police officers. Uh, as soon as that meeting was concluded, we asked them, whatever you've said, can you please send it to us in writing? Uh, when they sent the statement, they omitted that part. So I feel that they might have had a change of heart or perhaps that's not something they wanted to put in writing. Right. So legally, at this stage, they are incumbent. It's in incumbent upon them to actually provide security without any charge, right? We believe that is the law. But when the police is sending you a letter saying, we believe this event has a high security threat and you will be endangering the public if you go ahead, then we cannot move ahead without their, without their support. So that is why we had to cancel the event. What is the nature of the exact threat? Do they believe that this small group or this group of Khalistani extremists are physically going to attack the temple and people inside? Is that, is that what it is? Do they fear... Do they fear more? Do they fear potentially murderous attacks? What is it that that is the sense uh, that the police is concerned? They didn't go into more details. However, last year when we held this event, we had the similar types of um, threats being made online, and they did not ask us to cancel the event. We had the event successfully with off-duty police officers. So it seems that this year they expect more physical violence, and they believe that the property of the temple can be breached, as it was a week before at Hindu Sabha Temple in Brampton. And that is why they're asking this year to go ahead and cancel. Okay. Um, Ambassador Shashank, um, you know, two points over here. While the police haven't put it in writing that the, the temple authorities need to pay for security, what the pundit does say is that there was a face-to-face -face meeting when this was something which was conveyed. Um, how, again, how would you respond or how would you look at this? Do you believe that, you know, this is a betrayal of a basic service a police force needs to be providing? Well, I would say that consular camps are generally organized on the request of the 
uh, local communities, especially Indian people, uh, to give them consular services, any other help that may be needed. And generally, support is taken from the local law and order authorities, which is given promptly without asking for any money. But obviously, in this particular case, it's not just the money. I think the Canadian police is very clearly saying that uh, if you go ahead with the event, contrary to the advice rendered by the Canadian police, you will be responsible. So one is part is money. The other part is the responsibility will be of the temple and the consular uh, service providers. So therefore, we have to go on the basis of what the Canadian police is suggesting, number one. Number two, in case they put it down in writing about the uh, money part, then, of course, India will have to consider how to uh, implement reciprocity in such issues. Because the consular services are provided under the uh, Vienna Convention on Consular Relations, and that is to facilitate uh, the uh, services being rendered by your own community living in different parts of the country. And there are consular jurisdictions which have been agreed upon between the Canadian Foreign Office and the uh, Indian Embassy. And therefore, on that basis, the consular jurisdiction, wherever it extends from a consulate, the responsibility remains on the consulate to give those services as efficiently, as effectively as possible. And this is what has been happening for the last several years uh, in large countries where people feel that they may not be able to travel long distances, that the consular officials travel uh, they, and organize with the help of the local uh, Indian community centers so that wherever these people can come in more easily. Of course, if the Canadians are not in a position to provide security and support, then we have to abide by their judgment. And in case of any money and other kind of things, we'll have to consider reciprocity. Uh, Pandit Dhanraj, did anybody record this conversation? No, this was not a recorded conversation. At the request of uh, Peel Police, it was a private offline conversation. And how many people attended it? Uh, three police officers, as well as the leadership of Brampton Trivini Mandir, so four to five uh, board members, as so well as five, myself. four to five board members, including yourself, right, were part of a meeting where it was conveyed by Peel Police that you might need to pay up to be secured. That's what you're saying. That is correct. And these are all individuals who are willing to go, if asked, on record with this detail, that the police asked you to potentially pay for security. Well, the police did not tell us when they um, were giving this information that this is secret information, do not share with the public. And in fact, they're meeting with four to five individuals. So they must be aware that if they're saying this to us, we will tell to the public as well, because we made it very clear to them. When you ask us to cancel this event, our community is depending on this event. We have to give them valid reasons why we are canceling it. So we have to share this information with the public. Dr. Swasti Rao, if... Uh you know, the, the last sentence of the letter written by the Brampton Triveni Community Center actually conveys, uh, you know, a pretty dismal situation. We call on Peel Police to address the threats being circulated against Brampton Triveni Mandir and provide security guarantees to the Canadian Hindu community and the general public. From what, from what I have seen over here, there are no guarantees whatsoever. And isn't that perhaps the most shocking part of this? Uh, yes, Vishnu, I think this uh, this, this entire uh, situation has been spiraling uh, quite out of control. And contrary to what we have, uh, what we may have imagined, that uh, there will be, you know, better sense will prevail. I think it has been really uh, disappointing that uh, not only disruptions have been allowed um, in a way um, kind, kind of unabated for routine counselor work, but also, um, you know, all this, uh, all this problem with uh, with the police now coming up with these kind of issues and saying that it's a money thing and you have to pay money if you want us to, you know, provide you security. I think where where is it happening um, in in the world? Where does it happen like that in the world? So um, I think this is this is just a, a continuation of the anti-India disruptions that have been we that we've been seeing with Canada for a long time, and uh, also geopolitically, it becomes very very clear that um, just. Trudeau is in a is in a vulnerable spot. He's in a tight spot. Uh, you see a lot of statements coming out against him. Not only, of course, from the U.S. as well, 
I think it's his frustration is understandable, but I think what I'm really frustrated uh, myself with is the kind of the law and order situation perhaps in Canada. And, the, you know, uh, it's a it's a first world country where you would expect uh, the agencies and the rule of law to prevail, the agencies to do their work. But uh, I actually fail to understand uh, why, uh, for example, uh, you know, the Canadian police uh, is, is having this kind of a disdain when it comes to carrying on with their routine work because... Uh, um, I mean, um, I also understand that it's 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 just uh, getting from bad to worse because yeah. the Canadian National Council of Hindus, uh, you know, the Hindu Federation, the temple leaders, other advocacy groups, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I did read that they issued directive bar barring politicians from using temple facilities or political purposes um, unless they show concrete efforts to address uh, how the growing threat of Khalistani extremism in Canada is impacting, you know, uh, the, the Canadian Hindus. So in my opinion, this is just, something that uh, sort of fails to um, appeal to anybody's reason as to why would a country that believes in rule of law would come up with uh, tantrums after tantrums when about such extremely genuine things. And I was following the uh, discussion that you were having with other panelists here. It, it is very, very clear that uh, the will to, um, to, to repair the broken uh, relationship with India, with the larger Indian community, in Canada, not just, uh, you know, the very tiny faction of the Khalistanis is uh, is missing. And end of the day, I do see that this, um, no matter how we want to look at it, but it is a kind of a win, at least an optical win for all the Khalistani gangs, because it kind of uh, vindicates somewhere what they have been sure. trying to do. And this is going to be very bad for yeah, just the give me a second. I just wanted to go, go back to uh, Dean Baxendale. Uh, Mr. Baxendale is the... Is, is one aspect of the problem, the fact that the Khalistani cause, in a sense, and, the, and, and people affiliated with, uh, you know, Khalistani sensibilities have been mainstreamed in Canada for so long that police forces don't necessarily see them as being potentially trouble or potentially separatist or extremist. The fact that you've got a sergeant who's now been arrested, who was actually participating in the violence while he was off duty, uh, you know, what does that indicate? Well, it indicates that over 30 plus years, uh, you know, and going back to the Air India bombing, which uh, Terry Molesky uh, has written a book about, uh, you know, the Khalistani separatist movement and what it represents here in Canada. We've allowed diaspora communities and unfortunately individuals that are, have radical tendencies um, to embed themselves in the country, uh, build up assets, uh, raise money and funds for doing operations uh, globally. Uh, and this is uh, really, um, you know, a bad mark on our, you know, police forces. But quite frankly, it's our politicians that have not enabled the, the great officers that we have in place to actually take action. So, yes, this is this is a dangerous situation. Uh, the Foreign Interference uh, Commission is dealing with some of this right now. In A Willful Blindness by Sam Cooper, which we just brought out the third edition, we highlight uh, these aspects and organized crime being involved with these groups uh, who are actually seeking to uh, create great disharmony amongst various groups, Sikhs and Hindu, peaceful, loving Canadians that are here just to enjoy Canada and be part of the community and enjoy their religious freedoms. This is dangerous and we need to get a hold of this. Um, and hopefully uh, if there's a new government that comes in, uh, actions will be, uh, will be forthwith. Uh, to, to deal and address these with these situations. Uh, Terry Miluski, you had a point to make. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, could I just add that I think it would be a mistake on our, all of our parts uh, to th see this in the context of, you know, well, this is part of the pattern, uh, the, the enabling of uh, Khalistani propaganda. No, it's an expansion of the space given to Khalistanis to operate in Canada, because let's be serious. We have just granted them a veto on meetings, a, a, a normal meeting at the temple. They have a veto. All they've got to do to stop the meeting is threaten violence. And the police will say, oh, well, we can't afford to deal with that. Uh, so I guess you better cancel the meeting. Uh, so, so that is an expansion of the space, which is already too large, uh, given to Khalistanis to, pro to spread their propaganda in Canada and elsewhere. And it, uh, and it should be turned back before it goes any further. Uh, I mean, w w there is, for example, uh, an obvious example, uh, 
there is a dead silence from the political class in Canada on the question of the glorification of terrorism. We're talking about Brampton. We all know that it was Brampton where you uh, uh, only recently saw a truck going down the main street with a celebration of the assassination of Indira Gandhi in 1984. A truck with life-size figures blazing away at the Prime Minister, lots of red paint on her sari of these life-size figures celebrating an assassination. Uh, uh, to say nothing of the ongoing glorification of the Air India bomber, Talvinder Palmar, whose glorious poster is life-size on the size of an important Gurdwara in Surrey, British Columbia. So w w this silence must end in order to roll back the excessive space given to Khalistanis to spread the word in Canada. A final word uh, to you, uh, Pandit Yudhishthir Dhanraj. Do members of, uh, of the Temple Trust um, feel safe uh, presently? Do you believe that you are under a constant threat uh, of violence from Sikh extremists? Actually, we, we do not believe that we are under constant threat because one thing that this group has made very clear is that they are protesting the consular um, events that are being held at the temple and to try to, to save themselves from falling into hate speech. They have even said that their protest is not against the temple and it's not against Hinduism. Obviously, that seems contrary when they, they breach the premises of Hindu Sabha and they're taking sticks and they're hitting Hindus inside of the temple property. But this is what they're saying. So for them now to continue to threaten the temples after this event has been cancelled, as you said, they see that as a win. It's an optical win for them. So that would undermine their movement, I believe. So at this time, we would like to think that there is no constant threat. They have gotten what they wanted. The events have been cancelled by the temples. They have no more reason now to come and protest outside any Hindu temple in Brampton or in Canada. Yeah. If they do, then we'll need to look at the new situation and the new reality. Look, I'd like to thank you all very much for joining us. Uh, and, you know, Pandit Dhanraj bringing to our viewers, uh, you know, I mean, this, this new detail which has emerged of how the police were asking in a conversation for money for your security, something that they've not put down on a piece of paper. So that's an important rider that needs to be mentioned. But I'd like to thank you all very much for being with us.